Lift up your hearts to the Lord. Praise God's gracious mercy. Sing out your joy to the Lord, whose love is enduring. Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Praise the name above all names. <coughs> Say to God how wondrous your works, how glorious your name. Lift up your hearts to the Lord. Praise God's gracious mercy. <coughs> Sing out your joy to the Lord, whose love is enduring. Let the earth worship singing your praise. Praise the glory of your name. Come and see the deeds of the Lord. Bless God's holy name. Lift up your hearts to the Lord. Praise God's gracious mercy. Sing out your joy to the Lord, whose love is enduring. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. As we gather together today, we continue to celebrate with great Easter joy the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. Let us pause for a moment as we prepare to enter into these sacred mysteries by first calling to mind our sins and asking for God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are the author of life who put to death, who was put to death for our sins. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you were raised from the dead so that we might live with you forever. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you shine your light of salvation upon us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Gloria, Gloria, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father, Gloria, Gloria, glory to God in the highest and on earth to people of goodwill. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Gloria, Gloria, glory to God in the highest and on earth to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
Amen, Amen. Gloria, Gloria, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released for you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers and sisters, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm is number 1068. 1068. The God of justice gave me answer. From anguish you released me. Have mercy and hear me. Lord, let your face shine on us. Know that the Lord works wonders for his faithful one. The Lord will hear me whenever I call him. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. You have put into my heart a greater joy. O Lord, let your face shine on us. In peace I will lie down and fall asleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Lord, let your face shine on us. Oh. 
A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. spirit and life you have the words of everlasting life alleluia 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 the Lord be with you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do, you, why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I, myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And he, as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, this past week, I had the opportunity to travel down to Indiana to go observe the total solar eclipse. Uh, it's amazing that uh, as people who probably watch the news and, and hear about uh, all of those, those world events, um, we pick up these phrases, right? So like the, the line of totality was a new term that I had never heard before, and all of a sudden, everyone is uttering these phrases like we say them all the time, right? But we know that that wasn't the case. It's been a number of years since the last total eclipse came through. And I, I have to be honest, um, taking Father Matt and, and my mom and dad with me, uh, it was an amazing experience to see a total eclipse. 
Um, I, I hope that all of you will have a chance to do that at some point in your lifetime if you haven't. Um, it's a, it's a, it's an, a, a really a spiritual experience, um, to say the least, when you're able to um, see that the sun is, is totally blocked by the moon and you're able to look up and you're able to actually look at the sun that is blocked in front of you. The world around you is, is extremely dark, um, except for the horizon, which is uh, what kind of looks like a sunset going on. And so um, to be there and to experience that for just a little over, over two minutes was a really profound experience. And I've been thinking about it all week because uh, I've been trying to think of, of just how incredibly amazing uh, that is in terms of, of understanding our relationship with God. And I really took a number of things from, from this experience that I'd like to just simply share with you today. Uh, one of the things that I had heard on, on one of the news reports is that the, that the sun itself is 400 times bigger than the moon, but the moon is about 400 times further away from the sun. And so in proportion, they actually look exactly the same size, right? And that's what allows us to have a solar eclipse, a complete solar eclipse, is because of the ratio between the size of the sun and the ratio between the, the size of the sun and, and the, um, the distance that the moon is from it. And so it's really incredible to think that all of this has to be somehow set in motion, that, that when you start to add all of this up, you begin to realize that, that this wasn't just a, a happenstance, right? It didn't just occur. That there is an orderliness to the world that, that we experience, not only in the cosmos and seeing how the, the cosmos kind of collaborates with creation, but also in our daily lives. We experience this daily rhythm of, of this orderliness of the world. That when you think about even the, the smallest of things here on earth, everything kind of collaborates with the work of, of a divine creator. And it's really beautiful for us to be able to see that on full display in such a beautiful celestial uh, example as, as in a solar eclipse. And I know that many of you probably had the chance to go out and look at, at the eclipse here in Wisconsin, which was about 85%. And, and even at that, with the, with the proper glasses, I hope, you were able to see something that that is really, really incredible and something that, that many uh, human beings in the past have never been able to fully experience. One of the other scientific facts that I had learned as, uh, as we were preparing and Father Matt was reading all of these facts off on our way down to, to Indiana, we had a lot of time together in the car, as you can imagine. Um, all of these facts that he was sharing were, were fascinating, but one of the ones that that I kind of picked up on too, was that uh, in, the, in the entire um, lifespan of the universe, um, in about 600 million years, there will not be, uh, we will not be able to have a total solar eclipse in the world. It will no longer exist. In fact, it is because the, the, the movement of the moon is going to be uh, so significant by that time that a partial eclipse will only be able to happen. And, and likewise, prior to uh, these, uh, this time that we're living in right now, uh, a total solar eclipse would not have been possible either. And so when you think about that, we're, we're, we think about the fact that we are living in a very privileged time. To be able to see something so amazing as that, it's incredible to think that we are living in a very privileged time that has been blessed by God with such an incredible uh, celestial display of, of God's grandeur and of God's love for us. It was really struck me today as I was reading our gospel, it says, you are witnesses of these things, was the very final line of our gospel reading today. And we know that all of us have been witnesses to some pretty incredible and amazing things in our life. But one can only think about putting ourselves in the feet of those, in the, in the lives of those disciples as they were witnesses to Jesus' resurrection immediately following that wonderful and glorious day when they had discovered that the tomb was empty. 
They looked out and they were able to see Jesus for who he truly was in his resurrected form, but they were frightened at first. They were uncertain. They didn't know what it meant. They thought they had seen a ghost, and it took Jesus uh, the time to show them his hands and his feet to prove to them that he was who he said he was, and that he wasn't just some ghost. In fact, he even took it a step further, and he showed them that he could eat in front of them. And so when we think about what it means to be a resurrected person, we get these great examples in our gospel reading today. That even though Jesus looked a lot like who he was when he was walking the earth, he looked a lot different because the disciples were still unsure of who he was. Yet they were still able to see his hands and his feet, the nail marks that proved that he was the one who was crucified for their salvation. He was able to eat with them and still pass through walls. We get all of these different descriptive terms to help us to understand what the resurrection is going to be like. The resurrection that you and I have been invited to be a part of as well. And so like many things in our life, the resurrection remains a a pretty significant mystery. But we get these little glimpses, little glimpses of what it's going to be like when the Lord comes again and invites us into that most intimate relationship with the creator of the world, with the creator of the cosmos, with the creator of all that is good and holy. It's going to be an amazing experience, to say the very least. It's going to be the consummation of everything that God has offered to humanity as that privileged creation in the universe. God has blessed us with an abundance of gifts, including that most supreme gift, of sharing his only begotten son with us, sending his son into the world to die for our salvation and to prove to us that death does not have the last say, but life rings true for all eternity. And so let us place our faith, our hope, and our trust today in a God who loves us, in a God who breathed us into existence and shared his grace with us in in our baptism and now nourishes us with the bread of everlasting life. My dear friends, let us all please stand as we profess our faith together and have the confidence and the freedom to say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten God made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, who was incarnate in the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified and not just by He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scripture. We now offer our prayers of petition to our Heavenly Father. That the Church continues to make Christ known in the breaking of the Eucharistic bread and in feeding the hungry, we pray. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. That government leaders may revere the sanctity of life from conception to natural death, we pray. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. That all who are gathered here today may carry the message of love, hope, and mercy to all we encounter, both inside 
and outside the walls of the church, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the hungry and thirsty and those who are without food and clean water may receive the provisions they need without judgment, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That our faith community serves as a witness of our faith in Jesus, living as his hands and his feet in the world, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who have died this week as faithful witnesses to God's love in Christ, Carl Krieger, Deborah Borig, Verona Martin, Christopher Holmes, Joseph Schmitz, Donald Romalia, and Timothy Diet, and especially those remembered at this Mass, Rita Dieter and family, may they see God's face shining on them day after day in the heavenly kingdom, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and merciful God, we offer you these prayers of petition, those that we have voiced aloud and those that we hold in the silence of our hearts as we ask them through the resurrected Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Number 537, Easter Alleluia, 537. that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray these offerings of your exalted church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, 
the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jerome, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Our communion song is number 918, In the Breaking of the Bread, 918. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is number 540, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. 540. Jesus Christ is risen today, Alleluia. Our triumphant holy day, Alleluia. Who did once upon the cross, Alleluia, suffer to redeem our loss. Alleluia. Hymns of praise, then let us sing. Alleluia. Unto Christ our heavenly King. Alleluia. Who endured the cross and grave. Sinners to redeem and save.